watching a movie starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> Day eight, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't even stay up late. Instead, I stayed in and I ate and ate and ate. <laughs> Day 12, I still haven't had a drop. I'm praying for an Oscar and a script that won't produce a flop. I have to be really careful with the pages because I want to sell this on eBay. <laughs> Day 14. Oh my god, it's been two weeks since I've had my photo taken. It's blurring and stumbling, falling down the streets. Day 15. Where's my reward? Being sober, it feels like being an unpaid whore. <laughs> Day 19. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I feel great. I feel calm and serene. I'm living clean and sober without strife. <laughs> day 20. Okay, so yesterday was a lie. This is fucking bullshit. If sobriety is in my future, I think I want to die. Day 21. Sam got me a book on Feng Shui. 
Later, my dad tweeted that it was the drugs and drinking that made me gay. <laughs> Day 23. I feel really depressed, but I've got to say, I've organized my closet. It's no longer a mess. Day 25. Man, I love to tweet, but I gotta say, I do miss the photo ops with the paparazzi on the street. Day 28. Sam came over. Sam came over. Her shirt was silk screened with a bottle of Jack. <laughs> Out the window, I saw Nicole Richie. Made me think of crap. <laughs> she walked by. I stayed in. It's hitting hard. It's sinking in. I told Sam to go that I've got things to do. She kissed me and said, I know it's hard, Lynn, feeling like you have something to prove. I kissed her back and said goodbye. She'll never know. That image of Jack made me cry. Oh. <laughs> Day 29. An event tonight where I could go schmooze, but I don't think I can get through it without hitting up the booze. <laughs> Day 32, it's been over a month, but where's the clarity, where's the peace? I just feel like a fucking cunt. <laughs> Day 36, I've stayed up all night shaking. I've been smoking too much, and honestly, my bank account is breaking. Doesn't anyone want my leggings? Man, this really sucks. <laughs> Do you know anybody that could, uh, you know, loan me a few hundred thousand bucks? <laughs> Day 39, David Letterman made jokes about me. <laughs> what a disgrace. Then again, I guess I'd be a douche too if I had that kind of face. <laughs> Day 40, yay, house arrest is almost over. I still can't do drugs, but now I'm allowed to drink. Fuck being sober. <laughs> Day 41, so hungover, threw up by the bed, but at least I rolled over. <laughs> God, this is so great. I feel like I'm back. Hey, you want a party? Sam Texas, you got some preserve. <laughs> Day 42, told my dad, hey, fuck you. Flashed some packs my piece. You know how we do. Got in my Maserati, got some places to go. I'm feeling kind of sexy, thinking about some blow. <laughs> hey, are you guys in? Wow, she looks really thin. Oh my god, that's me! <laughs> I just saw my reflection. I was fucking hot. Hey, America, fuck you and your rehabilitation. <laughs> I know what I want. That was from the Ivy. I just want you to know that I'm not used to um, flaccid things on my face. <laughs> but I'll do it for you. I will do it for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, God, you're so welcome. <laughs> um, well, uh, so, um, this piece, um, which is not found with the Ivy, is called Portrait. You're cool, but not as cool as your knee-high laced up black four-inch slit of heel shoes. You've got class, but not as much class as that $39.99 bottle of oil-free matte finish NARS foundation that you buy oh, on average once a month before it runs dry, and your Q-tips can no longer reach those last two drops of paint for that pretty, pretty face. Oh, and you have such a pretty face. When it's painted with foundation, dotted with concealer, lined with liquid liner around your lids, eyeshadow for contour, eyebrows penciled and powered in, matte finish to take away that untimely, unwanted oily sheen for which your naturally oily complexion gives way to, and luscious frosted lip gloss and those cube shaped little lips. <laughs> I love when you 
Um, I mean, I, 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 I had several things laid out before I came here, and I was trying to make decisions and choices based on what I thought you would like. I care about you and your entertainment. And, uh, and your time is very expensive. I mean, mine is. I can't speak for yours, but mine is. And uh, what, I, what I thought about doing, and I mean, I wrote one, but I didn't bring it, but I, uh, what I wrote, I actually wrote um, a poem about Ben McCoy um, in the voice of... <laughs> and I swear to God, if I had known that was there, I would have brought it. <laughs> but you don't get all that. You don't get all that, Pele, goddess worship. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to say before I do my last and final poem um, is that um, I am included. Uh, this is my first um, something that I was published in. Um, thanks. Because, um, you know, it's a bitch <laughs> getting into the industry. Lindsay knows all about it. And, um, well, I didn't have parents. I mean, pimps like hers. And um, this is called Persistence, Always Bush and Femme. And uh, it's a book about, it's an anthology of collection about um, gender roles, uh, basically the roles of Femme and Bush. And there's poetry, uh, manifestos. And uh, short stories and such, of which I have included. And um, if you, um, I mean, you can look it up and be like, God, why didn't I get that tonight? And have it sent to you. Amazon takes um, 12 to 14 days. And, um, but if you get it for me tonight, I will not only autograph it for you. I'm going big, you guys. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But I don't yet have my own personal assistant. So, uh, but also, uh, I will give you also, and included with the book, um, a letter that I wrote to the editor of uh, the book, yes. who, um, when the book was published, um, the editor changed my bio um, without my consent and sort of altered my gender pronoun. Um, now, I'm not one to cry about that because I don't like to ruin my makeup, but um, I wrote a letter and some things got changed. I got, I got her fired, and um, I'm just like, Yo. Yes! yes. Uh, so, um, anyway, if you buy the book, kind of, if you want the book, come up and talk to me, and I'll also include the letter, which is not included in the book, but I'll stick it there. All right. Before the last piece, uh, I'm going to pass this hat around. If you can put any money in it to support Ben or this space, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm not cheap. Look at my clothes. <laughs> and my purse. <laughs> and my shoes. Okay. I hope you guys like this. This is called How a Lady Writes a Poem. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 
Scorpio or Pisces, it is highly recommended to rub your genitals with theirs. <laughs> if delicate, overtly sentimental, or a lack of possessing genitalia, one may then instead enter a long-term romantic relationship with the previously mentioned star sign. <laughs> The only thing more emotional than an emotional individual is having a relationship with one. <laughs> this will cause many sleepless nights which are an excellent time to write poetry. Yes! <laughs> Should you, however, like most of the population, fail to relate or exhaust the activity of Magical genital rubbing. Fear not hopeful poets. Long before the internet, our ancestors, in collaboration with the devil, created something we now call drugs. It is a well known fact that drugs alter, distort, and change a one's language, body, and communication. This is in no way clearer than when googling the words Courtney Love. <laughs> Sadly, fame has nothing to do with poetry. Studies show that an organic, free-range, recyclable, compostable, hemp cotton blend, crocheted handbag, and dog tote is frequently a home to scribbled poetry, prose, and haikus. <laughs> <laughs> an Hermes Birkin bag? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it is a study in life to realize that a 401k health insurance, a well-adjusted mental health and fully paid mortgage to a clean home with a view is not conducive to poetry. <laughs> <laughs> a shared, dilapidated apartment strewn about with sordid characters in possession of a personality disorder <laughs> is a beehive buzzing with poetry. <laughs> The initiation for all serious students of poetry and prose is the recommended the recommendation letter called the eviction notice. <laughs> this brings us closer to the heart and home of poetry, which is ironically the homeless. <laughs> Yes! This 
Yes, she can! <laughs> the ants are liars in cafes and coffee shops all across the world. Because there are many forms of torture, there is such a thing called open mics. <laughs>